Have you guys ever wondered how the Cadmus Royal Flush Gang connects to the Royal Flush Gang from Batman Beyond? <laughs> Because it's Thursday. Hello, Watchtower Database, and welcome back to The Vanishing Point. This is the final one in this set, and by the time you're watching this, I've probably been a month moved into my new apartment and still trying to figure out how to build the new set. Or maybe it's already built. You won't know. Today, we are talking about the Royal Flush Gang, and not because someone told me to do it in the comments, but because I wanted to, and someone just happened to say it in the comments after. So let's dig on into it. Over the course of the DCAU, we got six Royal Flush Gangs that we've seen on screen and in tie-in material. Amanda Waller had a hard time keeping count. I'm gonna make it easy for you. In order of appearance, they were the Walker family from the Batman Beyond cartoon series, then a group headed by the twin siblings of both the Walker King and Queen, and a near identical cousin to Melanie Walker as that group's 10, as well as two former prison inmates of that twins, twin kings, twins, the Twin King had prison mates. They were they were in the group. The third group was headed up by the Walker group's Jack, who was now the King and had a guy named Chet and a guy named Wyatt and two women who were never told the names of. Right? Chet and Wyatt? Chet and Wyatt. Got it. I looked, but that was after I said it right. We then see a version of the gang in Justice League Adventures that got retconned out of continuity for the new Cadmus gang that we got in the Justice League series. And then we get Ace's gang from Epilogue. Now, in the Batman Beyond Files, we're told that, what is it we're told? I thought I'd be able to just open this up and do it quickly. There it is. The gang has a strict chain of command, headed by a king whose authority is never questioned. His wife, a queen, is second in command, followed by the other kings and queens, the jacks, and the younger numbered cards. We really never see this hierarchy within the series, and based on the book's publication date around the first season of the show, it's likely that that was all just conjecture based on what was going on in the mainstream comics at the time. However, when first introduced to the gang, Bruce tells us, The Royal Flush Gang's been around a long time. They're a family. They bring in new members, sons, daughters, husbands, wives, as the older ones retire or go to prison. This dialogue's all backed up by going over portraits of 10 different people that we can assume are prior Royal Flush Gang members. Oddly enough, with Bruce having had prior run-ins with the gang and knowing that they're a family, you'd think he would have been able to track down, oh, this is the Walker family. Oh, they're staying at a hotel in Gotham. But you know, that wouldn't have been satisfying storytelling. To that date, we had never seen Bruce go up against the Royal Flush Gang. Chronologically speaking though, we're first introduced to the gang later in Justice League's Wild Cards. And they're no longer aristocratic British types, but instead teenagers with superpowers because that doesn't fly in the face of the family dynamic but okay the new group also had a change in card suits while the walker family was spades this new group were clubs and really those two things kind of pointed to them being completely separated things gangs separated gucci gucci gang gucci gang gucci but by this point in the timeline we are only 20 years away from bruce retiring more or less. So what gives? When does the family dynamic start? Well, what if I told you guys I know all five members of the group that Bruce broke up as Batman before retiring and I could connect them to the Cadmus gang. How's that gonna make us any richer? <clears throat> We're told the king of the prior Royal Flush gang was the Walker family's queen's father. And we're also told the Walker family king was in that group as well, likely as the Jack. Knowing what we know about the Royal Flesh Gang's family ties, we can easily assume that the queen of that group was Walker Queen's dad's wife. 
Yeah, and then the Walker Queen would have been in as well. And very likely the Walker Queen's twin sister. Boom, boom, pow. Y'all chickens jacking my style. I'm trying to copy my sweat. I don't, black eyed peas, doesn't matter. Now we're also told that the king of the Walker gang was the age of that gang's Jack when Batman bust up the previous gang, which means likely the queen and twin queen of that gang were roughly around the same age as him as well. So knowing that at least 20 years passes between then and Batman Beyond, they were probably roughly around 20 years old at the time. And so tying them back to the Cadmus gang doesn't seem very likely. So we're gonna have to look at the Walker gang queen's mom and dad to tie them back. Now this is where it starts getting interesting. As I'm sure you've noticed, I haven't really talked much about epilogue. So in the spirit of hashtag keep epilogue a secret, there's a video. If you haven't watched epilogue yet, we're getting into spoilers. Cover your ears, cover your eyes, run for the hills. I'm giving you a chance. Take Take it. If you're not gone yet, don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, let's jump into it. So in epilogue, we see the return of the Royal Flush Gang with the Ace of the Cadmus Gang and everyone else being all new members. Ace is still wearing her clubs, but everyone else is wearing spades outfits. We also find out none of this new gang actually had metahuman abilities and instead were all normal people who Ace gave the abilities to. So spades, normal people, starting to seem like these people might be related to the Walker gang or at least one of them, but which one? Well, right away we can rule out the Jack of this gang. As part of the joke, this Jack is a samurai and the voice actor of Samurai Jack was Phil Lamar. And if you look, his depowered self is an African-American. Doesn't seem to really run in the Walker gang's blood. The next person we can likely rule out is Queen. This Queen is, come to find out, a drag queen. Statistically speaking, a little less likely to uh to <laughs> reproduce not to mention the guys overweight balding kind of seems just a little out of place in the hoity-toity walker family so we're left with this group's king and ten now the king seems innocent enough but in my opinion he does look just a little too old to be starting a family gang. Ten, on the other hand, seems like a more likely candidate. This may seem like a little bit of a stretch, but look at her hair and look at look at Melanie Walker's hair. You notice something? They're both blonde. Is this a coincidence? Maybe, but for real though. Those of you that I told to leave earlier, if you haven't seen Epilogue and you decide to stay around anyway, we're really gonna get into spoilers right here, so... It's been theorized back and forth whether Terry being related to Bruce was the plan from the get-go in Batman Beyond. But one thing is for sure. Bruce Tim has gone on the record saying the idea came up when taking the character's hair colors into consideration. To quote the man that I just called wrong last episode, we were always amused that Lil Matt was an almost exact duplicate of Terry, even down to the hairstyle. Then the hair itself got us thinking, huh, Terry and Matt have jet black hair, dad's hair is sandy brown, and mom's a redhead. Hmm, why is that important you're asking? Well, have you not seen Epilogue? I told you to go away if you haven't watched it yet. So the episode focuses mainly on the Bruce and Terry lineage, which came into consideration because of their hair colors. And so while dropping hints to connect the Cadmus Royal Flesh Gang to the Walker gang, would it really be too far of a stretch to think maybe Bruce Tim intentionally said, hey, color color that girl's hair blonde, just do it. It's a good, it's good, good Bruce Tim impersonation. Overall, I don't know for sure, and maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I would love to hear from you guys down under in the Australia box. Do you think that this gang's 10 went on to form what ended up becoming the, the Walker family gang? Or am I not giving the king enough credit? Oh, hey, this is embarrassing. I said there were six Royal Flush gangs. I forgot. There was actually a seventh one in Justice League Unlimited number 42. I found when I was sending information to James. So there's there's seven of them and I shot all that a month ago. I goofed. Oh, don't worry about this. You'll, you'll see it in two weeks.
I want to thank all these people, all of them, for supporting us on Patreon this month. You're really helping us out. It's awesome because out of all the jobs I have, this is the one I enjoy the most. So I want to spend as much time doing it as you guys will allow for me to do. All that being said, it's time to pack up all of this, get it moved to the new place. I've been Maddie Washburn. This has been The Vanishing Point. We'll continue to stay both those things so long as you continue to stay you. I love you guys a bunch. I'll see you in two weeks.